Is it live, Randy? Yep. Live? We're live. Cool. So guys, we are live here on, on my school. We just finished a very long day of filming here with John. John is doing all his fundamental series, right? So today, for example, he finished uh, filming the half part of the series of the fundamentals and also did uh, one part of the close guard. And guys, today we're gonna discuss, uh, try to discuss here a little bit of how important is the fundamentals of Jiu Jitsu for every single BJJ practitioner. In, uh, doesn't matter if you are a beginner or if you're advanced. And uh, what do you think about that, John? We were just talking here, yeah. and then I had the let's put it live. Let's, let's. Um, first off, guys, apologies. I have a heavy cold, so uh, please excuse my voice. It's even worse than normal. Um, but uh, yeah, we just had a fascinating discussion about the, the nature of the fundamentals in, in Jiu Jitsu. And one of the great cliches of the sport we all grew up with this idea that uh, the fundamentals are everything. So often you hear this, you know, without fundamentals, you'll never amount to anything. And we're very much in agreement with this. Uh, that is a student who lacks skills in the fundamentals of the sport is always going to struggle. Um, so often as a coach, I see people who are very, very talented in certain niche areas. They have, you know, for example, just great leg locks um, uh, or a great armbar, a great triangle. But weakness in the fundamentals of the sport, weakness in things like their, their escapes, etc., etc., means that they never really get an opportunity to use those moves and the skills that they have. Um, as a general rule, when you lose a jiu-jitsu, in the majority of cases, you lose along the lines of your weakest skill sets. So when you're weak in the fundamentals, I hate to say it, but you tend to lose a lot because that gets exposed very quickly, very easily. Um, so there's a sense in which you have to first cover your weaknesses and learning the fundamentals is step number one in that right direction. But of course, it's never enough just to not lose to an opponent. You want to go out and actively beat the opponent. You want to go out and take control of matches, take charge of them. And that too is a set of fundamental skills. Um, as a general rule, we make uh, a, a distinction between the fundamentals and your advanced skills. Okay? Most coaching curriculums are built around this fundamental distinction. You've got your fundamentals over here, you learn when you first come into Jiu-Jitsu, and you've got your advanced skills, you learn over here. And often classes are divided along those lines. Uh, this creates, it's, I'm not, it's not wrong to do this, but there is a potential problem here. That potential problem is that many students carry within them a mistaken way of looking at the sport. They tend to see the fundamentals as a phase that you must pass through. So they say, oh, uh, okay, I'm a beginner, I'm a white belt, so I've got to learn these fundamentals. And then as soon as that's over, we're going to get into the exciting stuff, we're going to learn blue, purple, brown, black, black belt skills, and then I'm going to forget all about my fundamentals. You cannot have that mindset, okay? The fundamentals are the bedrock, the foundation upon which your entire game is based. Indeed, your ability to learn advanced skills is directly proportional to how good you are at fundamental skills. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, Bernardo Fario, six-time world champion, uh, five John, you, five. you added and, one more time. It was inflation. It was inflation. Um, yeah. um, uh, one of the greatest world champions uh, uh, of, of his era. And uh, at no point in your career did you ever make use of Ashi Garabi based leg locks. You had very good yep. uh, uh, half guard yep. knee bar attacks yep. because he's a katama, you're very strong in that. But Ashi Garami based leg locks was never really a part of your game. When we filmed the Enter the System leg lock uh, DVD, within two days, uh, Bernardo was effortlessly hitting heel hooks on his training partners at the yep. gym. Now, why was it so? Uh, typically, I couldn't just grab a guy and say, hey, two days later, you're heel hooking black belts. It's not going to happen. But for someone who already is strong in the fundamentals, it's so easy for them to build additional skills on top of that. And it, within two days, he's heel hooking black belts. Um, that's a direct result of the fact that he's strong in the fundamentals. Someone who's strong in the fundamentals is very, very easy to teach new skills. Someone who's weak in the fundamentals it can be a nightmare. So um, just fast progress in the sport overall and the ability to add new skills as you, as you develop over time, it all begins with the fundamentals. Um, so we've got to get away from this mindset that the fundamentals is a phase that you pass through. No, you never pass through the fundamentals. The idea is this, when you go to make progress over time in Jiu-Jitsu, there's two ways you do it. You must refine 
the, the existing skills that you already have, usually fundamentals, because that's what you start with. So with regards to fundamentals, there's going to be a process of refinement for the rest of your time in Jiu-Jitsu. As long as you're doing Jiu-Jitsu, you must be looking to actively refine and improve the fundamental skills you already have. Then there's the addition of new and more advanced skills. So the way I see students making progress is in two different directions. There's refinement of existing skills and there's the addition of new skills. Typically, the addition of new skills concerns more advanced technique. So in the case of Bernardo Faria, he added Ashigarabi-based heel hooks to his already substantial skill set. And it was easy for him to do so because he was strong in the fundamentals. But that doesn't mean that he just stops learning with regards to his fundamentals. Even now, uh, having been in the sport for a long time, both of us spend the majority of our training and research time getting better at the small uh, improvements with regards to fundamentals. And to be honest with you, I get more joy even now at, at, at 53, um, having been in the sport a very long time, with a small improvement in, say, for example, my elbow escape than I would in discovering a new leg lock. Even though one is supposedly a far more advanced skill, I'm, I know I'm going to use that elbow escape movement or refinement a lot more than I'm going to use that new leg lock. Uh, and so I get excited about the fundamentals. When there's improvement there, I'm going to use that every single day as opposed to a new and exotic move that I might use once every few months or every few weeks. Um, so always make sure, let's make sure that we don't walk around with that attitude that the fundamentals is something you just do for a short time, it's kind of boring, you have to do it, it's a phase you have to pass through, and then you get on to the exciting stuff. No, that's not the way it works. The fundamentals are where the, the, the majority of your attention has to be for the, for the entirety of your career. And always there's this act of continual refinement of the fundamentals over time. Right now you might have a good elbow escape, but we're not interested in you having a good elbow escape. We want you to have a great elbow escape. And when you get a great elbow escape, we want you to have an excellent elbow escape. When you get to an excellent elbow escape, we want you to have the best goddamn elbow escape in the academy. In the, in maybe one day in the world. Okay, That's the goal. Constant refinement over time and it never, never stops. There's never that end of the fundamentals where, okay, I, I've mastered the fundamentals and now it's time for my advance. No, you never master the fundamentals. There's refinement over time. That's the way that you want to think about uh, fundamentals training. Yeah. And John, you just mentioned like, how can you get better on the elbow escape, get better, get better, get better, get better. And I think at some point it started to happen that you can even start putting together two fundamentals techniques, right? Because Absolutely. while you were saying that, for example, one of my favorite escapes from the mall is mixing up the bridge, the up with the elbow escape. So I use two of the most basic fundamental escapes we have Absolutely. and I put them together and it works like really well. Let's run through yeah. Let's do some demonstrations here. I'm mounted on top of Bernardo. Now, um, let's talk about the idea of, of fundamentals. Okay, People talk about fundamentals like techniques are fundamental. But understand something. There's things out there much more fundamental than moves or techniques. The most fundamental things in Jiu-Jitsu, the real bedrock upon which the entire sport is, is based, it's not techniques. It's body movements and concepts that underlie the techniques. They're the true bedrock. The techniques are built on top of those. For example, no one could perform an elbow escape if they couldn't first perform the basic body movement of shrimping. They couldn't perform an uber if they couldn't first perform the basic body movement of bridging. Here, I'm mounted on top of banana that's bringing the camera in this direction. If Bernardo just went for an elbow escape and just went right from here, there's many things I can do to frustrate him. I can turn my knee inwards. I can shift my body weight. And when he goes to finish that elbow escape, it's awfully, awfully difficult. But Bernardo's point is that he can start by off-balance me with an Uber, for example. I react to it. Now suddenly, the elbow escape is so easy for him. And the combination of two basic moves works incredibly well for him. Let's look at Bernardo and run, run through some details on this. I, I, I noticed you doing this when you're training for these students. You're very good at yep. this. Fine job. Just run the people through. Same thing? Yeah. Just, just talk, talk to them. 
say what you yeah you so think. guys uh, let's bring the camera on this side so you what, can see. Uh, what, what i was talking is for example many times i try to do the abo escape and it do just doesn't work right l let's see how i can stop it when he goes in he's trying to get inside position with the elbow so when i turn my knee in which i frustrate is that inside position when i put my weight on the right knee by taking my left knee off the floor now bring the camera back it brings all the focus of my weight onto my right knee when he tries to move it it's a very difficult thing to do and in the same time, many times I try to do the bridge as well, and it doesn't work. For example, I control this arm from joint, and he puts the other arm over there, or he moves his weight, and there is no way to do it. So one example here of com uh, combining two of the fundamentals, I can try to do the bridge, and then the bridge didn't work, and now I go to the elbow escape, and I bring my leg in, leg in, that kind of stuff, and I recover the guard. So exactly was what was John was mentioning in the beginning, like how you can make one position better, 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 and then you can even put them together and uh, that kind of stuff. It's fascinating. It's I think like a side control, same thing, like if the joints are side control, right? I could try to just recover the guard like this, and if it fails, I can also try to turn on the knee and that kind of stuff. And guys, one thing that... Uh, I, uh, I was very impressed with John last time we shot a video was that uh, I was telling him like how this position is one of my favorites like hip escape and turn on the knee to recover the guard and then he was showing me one detail that I used to do this detail for like forever and I didn't know that I used to do can you show that oh, John? Yeah, yeah. that was um, awesome this goes back to what we said earlier about how uh, people think the techniques are fundamental well they can be but Underneath the techniques, there's something much more fundamental, the body movements and the concepts that underlie them. Understand that all the escapes have one concept in, in, in common. It's the idea of creation of space. From your opponent's perspective, he's looking to get as tight to you as possible. The reason why Bernardo's combination of upa and elbow escape works so well is creating a huge amount of space. As I reacted to the upa, space was developed which made the elbow escape possible. The more space we can create, the easier the various escapes become. Now, when we first start off with a basic body movement like shrimping, let's say I had an imaginary opponent out to my right hand side, I form my frames, and I want to create space between my hips and his lower body. If I just plant my foot, it puts a limit on how much space I can create with shrimping. What if I too, first took this, this foot of mine, and instead of simply planting it, I managed to plant it further out. That would mean that the distance covered by my shrimp would be gr dramatically increased. Now the question is, how am I gonna do that? Well, what if I combine two body movements, kipping and shrimping? If I use a simple kipping motion, where I use the momentum of a moving lower body to kip and take my hips out, I can move much further away and plant my foot so much further away from my opponent that when I do go to shrimp now, massive amounts of space open up between us and I now have the option of an elbow escape on one side or a knee escape on the other. Let's contrast this and visualize it according to these lines on the mat. Okay, if we bring the camera right here, you see this line that goes through the tatame on the mat. I'll put my center line on that line. Okay, I have an imaginary opponent out to my right hand side. I want to maximize the distance that I create away from him to facilitate my escapes. If I just plant my foot, I can only move so far away from that line I described. However, if I start with a kip that throws momentum in my legs in a given direction, it enables me to plant my foot so much further away that now, when I shrimp, you'll see I'm much, much further away from the line on the mat. And as a result, we're able to get up underneath our opponent and get in the skirt. So if we have a banana here on top of us, and I have an underhook in place. If I just plant my foot, I just plant it wherever I am, and I shrimp, I only move so far away from Bernardo. But if I start with a kipping motion that takes my hips away from my opponent, so that now, when we shrimp, there's a huge amount of space between us. And I can take advantage of that space, turn up to my knees, and into a strong single situation to put my opponent down to the floor. Simple movements like this, where you take what seems like a, a basic fundamental skill, and you add a little refinement, um, working at the level, not of the technique, 
like the body movements that underlie it can make a huge difference in performance. Right. Like um, I remember one day watching you roll with your students and he was doing a drill where he's being held on bottom and side control. No one could hold you for more than a few seconds. And you were doing exactly this movement. Yeah. Um, interestingly, well, you were doing it unconsciously <laughs> without even knowing yeah, you were doing it. That's one of my favorite moves and it's very, very, very fundamental. And the, but the reason I wanted to you showing this one because uh, guys many times when uh, every time John comes here he films here and then I sit over there just point there already uh, I stay sitting over there watching John teaching and then uh, John was teaching that and I was like huh that's one of my favorite moves and then I was, I was just thinking like man do I do that and then I just pl play around and imagine that someone was passing my guard. And then I noticed that every time someone tries to pass my guard, I kind of bend my leg. And then I go for it. So I was like, man, I never realized that. So that, that was awesome, you know. So just again, instead of just doing the hipscape like this, that I don't have too much angle, I do this. And then I go and the position works much better. So those very little details yeah. i think it's what makes they fundamentals make, very interesting they, right they, they make a difference in performance like if, if you don't do that it's going to be a lot harder to escape but when you do do it you notice immediately hey guys that i couldn't previously escape from i'm getting out now so th th there's no ambiguity here you can see in your live sparring is it working or not and it's such a satisfying feeling when you take a fundamental move like that which you struggle to work on, on certain opponents and suddenly it's working it's like oh man it's the best yeah, no, I agree. yeah. Oh, oh randy if anybody asks any questions let us know I, maybe if we ask if anybody has any questions they can yeah guys up. feel free to ask any questions we're gonna keep going here me and john but uh if you guys have any questions let us know that was well, like one of the ideas of the live but john and uh can you talk a little bit about the scissor suit that uh, yeah yeah um you know there's, there's a whole question here you know, what are the fundamentals of Jiu-Jitsu? At some point, you've got to ask this question. Like, you want to teach fundamentals? Well, what are the fundamentals? What makes this move fundamental and that move advanced? Um, I think one of the best ways to, to look at this question is to understand how many other moves are affected by that fundamental move. Okay? Um, let's say, for example, a flying armbar. It's a beautiful move. We both love it. Um, but in all honesty, if you learn the flying armbar, it's not going to help you to learn a lot of other moves. It's pretty much a single track. Uh, there's only a small set of moves uh, closely allied to a flying armbar, where if you learn the flying armbar, other moves would be easy to learn. There's other moves, like, um, or even movements, like shrimping, where if you learn that, you can adapt that to a vast array of moves. And that's the more foundational, the more fundamental one. Um, when you look at a move like the scissor sweep, it's often taught as uh, a foundational move in the sport. You go to beginner classes around America and Brazil, and you'll often see a scissor sweep taught in, in, the, in the basics curriculum. Um, one of the beauties of fundamental moves is that very often they illustrate body movements and concepts which will have a, a trickle-down effect and permeate throughout your entire jiu-jitsu game. The scissor sweep is a classic example. Interestingly, Bernardo, if you actually look at world championship black belt competition, the scissor sweep does not figure very prominently. I agree. Like, when was the last time you remember? Yeah, we were talking about that. And the only guy that I, I know that it was really good on scissor sweep it was a long time ago. I think it was Liborio. Yeah, Liborio had yeah. the scissor sweep. But, yeah. but even, even for Liborio, it wasn't like that was his main method of scoring. Like I he had it. many other moves that. Yeah. And the yep. scissor sweep was relatively low, but he did hit it a couple of times. Yep. But that's going back a long ways. Yep. Um, so there's a sense of which that's odd. It's supposed to be a fundamental move. Aren't the fundamental moves supposed to be the ones we use every single day? Um, well, sometimes a move can be fundamental not because it's used a lot at elite level competition, uh, but because it illustrates important concepts, body movements, which will be used a lot at AD competition. Let's look at the scissor sweep as a good example of this. Okay, we've got Bernardo here. He's on two knees in my closed guard. One of the most important concepts that we're gonna work in the Go Further Faster series is the idea that when we go to sweep people from guard, there's always like a three-step process, okay? That three-step process is very easy to understand. First, you've gotta get a grip on your opponent. Okay, if you, if you don't have a strong working grip on your opponent, nothing's gonna happen. So, for the case of the scissor sweep, there's a bunch of grips we can use. I'll demonstrate from a fairly standard grip. 
where I go through and I take a good cross lapel grip on my training partner. Then we take a four finger cuff grip here and I take my wrist and I cover my training partner's wrist. So I've got good control of my training partner's uh, hand. Now from here, we're gonna open up our guard behind his back and we're gonna shimmy our hips out and we're gonna take our knee through and across and put our knee on top of our own wrist. If I put my knee underneath my wrist like so, it's very easy for Bernardo to pressure down and constrict my two knees together and now I'll never scissors with anybody. So we put our knee on our own wrist like so. Now when Bernardo tries to pressure my knee down, his own gi prevents it from happening. Okay, my knee is held in place ultimately by his gi through my cross grip. Now from here, we're gonna put our foot on our training partner's hip and we're gonna do something very, very interesting. We're gonna load up all of our opponent's weight onto one knee. What I wanna do is I wanna break my opponent's balance. There's two key elements. The first is to bring his head forward. If Bernardo's head moves away from me, uh, straight back, very, very hard for me to sit this with you now. His weight's on his knees and you feel like, uh, he feels like a mountain. But if I can bring Bernardo's weight forward, that's gonna change. Let's bring the camera this way. Watch my left foot. Let's bring the camera this way. I put my shoelaces right near Bernardo's lat muscle. So I can use my left leg to bring Bernardo's weight forward. Now let's bring the camera back this way. Once Bernardo's head comes over my chest, now we play a trick with our left leg. I'm gonna take my left leg and I'm gonna put all of Bernardo's weight over his left knee, just like so. Now let's bring the camera in this direction. Watch Bernardo's right knee, it's coming up off the mat. So 100% of Bernardo's weight is on his left knee. Now let's bring the camera back this way. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. If 100% of Bernardo's weight was on his left knee and I took his left knee away, What's going to happen to Bernardo? It's going to fall. It's just physics. Okay? So I find the loaded leg that I put all of his weight on. And now I employ a scissor sweep. And it's 100% effective. Okay? So there's a sense here in which we're playing with the fundamental concepts of jiu-jitsu. We're loading all of our opponent's weight by breaking his balance, developing what we call kazushi or off-balancing. Bringing his weight forward out of balance with a strong grip. Then we load 100% of his weight onto one limb, and then we just cut that limb away. I don't care who your opponent is, or I don't care what their skill level is, I don't care how athletic they are. If you put 100% of their body weight on one leg, and you cut that leg away, they're going to fall down. It's just the way the, life, the world works, okay? So there's a sense in which we're learning a lot about the general nature of sweeping from one fundamental sweep. We're learning that everything starts with grip. We're learning that everything needs to be, our opponent needs to be taken out of balance and his stance broken and his weight put onto one leg. And then if we actually employ the move, in this case a scissor sweep, it's going to be 100% effective. So let's quickly run through all that again. Okay, we've got Bernardo here. He's in our closed guard. We go through. We're going to work with a cross lapel grip. There's other grips we'll investigate in the Go Further Faster series, but this is a good initial grip. We get hand control, just like so. We shift our hips out to the side and we reinforce our knee position, just like so. I use my foot here in his lat muscle to bring his body weight forward, and now watch Bernardo's head. My whole thing is to bring him out of balance by bringing the head forward. Now I use a mild scissoring action from my top leg to put all of his weight onto one knee. Once the, all of his body weight is compromised on that one knee, it's so easy now to cut away my training partner's body weight and end up on top. So this is a good example of taking what we call a fundamental move and showing how it, it demonstrates principles, concepts, and body movements which will permeate throughout your entire game. In this sense, one move can teach you many moves, and that's what makes it fundamental. Even though the scissor sweep is not really a move that we see much in World Championship competition, yep. I, I literally can't remember the last time I saw it in the World Championships, I still think it's an important part of a beginner's program, precisely because it teaches us so much about other aspects of the sport. Now let's contrast that with the idea of high percentage moves. There are other moves that I like to teach in a fundamentals program that a lot of people would say, that's not fundamental, that's advanced. I disagree. What I like to see is the fundamentals have applicability all the way through to black belt level and beyond. 
it's my belief, and I believe the belief of many people in Jiu-Jitsu, that there are many famous athletes, one of my good friends, Roger Gracie, was one of them, who took pretty much a game that was entirely fundamentals and just I... refined them throughout his entire life and employed them with devastating effect at the highest levels. My contention is, one of the best ways to make a distinction between moves that are fundamental and moves that are not is to ask yourself a simple question. How broad is the application of these moves among Jiu-Jitsu athletes? Is this a move that you see in white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt? Do you see it in both male and female categories? Do you see it in all weight categories? Do you see it being used for a long period of time by a large number of athletes with good success rates? If the answer is yes, I'm prepared to say it's fundamental. The only way you could explain how it's used by so many different people with so many different body types for so long is that it adheres to strong fundamental principles that make it high percentage. So for example, one of my absolute favorite moves in, in Jiu-Jitsu is sumigation, the hook sweep, okay? So we have an opponent down on two legs, sorry, two knees, and from here, we're able to use any given method to expose our training partner's belt. And from here, we get a good grip on our training partner's sleeves, and again, it's all about the breaking of balance, okay? So we use this belt grip to break our opponent's balance and bring his head forward. When Bernardo's head comes forward in front of his knees, it's so hard for now to prevent being off balance in this position. Even if Bernardo takes his two knees off the mat and tripods his body up high, even from here, it's gonna be pretty easy for us to roll our training partner through and put him down to the mat. So this is a fine example of a move which um, me could tell where it's a little bit beyond the fundamentals. I would disagree. I would say that's the move that you see all the time in all okay. levels. Yeah. Um, and I've coached many, many white belts to use that within a very short time frame and have just as much success as, as many more experienced black belts. So there's two ways you can look at fundamentals. You can say, okay, how much does this educate us about moves in general in Jiu-Jitsu? It may not be used that much in competition, but it might still have educational value. But at the end of the day, you've got to have practical value too. Jiu-Jitsu can't just be all theory. At some point, you've got to be able to kick some ass. So... Um, that's when I bring in the idea of high percentage. So I like to see a mix in a fundamentals program between theoretical importance, say for example a scissor sweep, and practical importance, which is many of the moves which we teach them to go through the faster series. Yeah, and uh, John, one question here, like every every video that I post, yeah. um, that we do together, I always see someone asking like, uh, what's John methodology for his competition training? So how do you apply the fundamentals techniques with the competition team? Because as you can see, like, uh, I think Gary is probably one of the hardest guys to get a submission on it, yeah. right? And uh, Gordy, we, we almost never see him tapping as well. So what's the method methodology that you use for the competition training? Like, is there anything specific that you do with fundamentals for them? Like, Yes, there is. Um, my whole thing is, is, is precision, okay? Uh, so often you see people teaching the generalities and they say, okay, defend say for example the rear mount in this fashion and they show the, the generalities of the move that's fine you'll have some success escaping using generalities but my whole thing is to show particulars and details down to a level which uh, a lot of people would find almost um, difficult to deal with like people say oh, I, I, I teach too long or I show too many details um, I don't believe you can ever show enough details. Yeah, I agree. But I, agree. I make damn sure of one thing. I prioritize details. Remember, yep. your students have to be able to remember everything under stress. You can't give them 10,000 pages of notes and say, remember that when you're getting strangled. Yep. Life doesn't can I interrupt you very quick? Yeah, so last week we brought seven of the best customers from BGJ Fanatics here to, to do a trip here to Boston. And then we, 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 I taught them a, like a mini seminar and this and that. And they were talking about that. They were talking how when they watch your video, sometimes they watch one technique in the volume one and then in the volume two, they watch something similar that is a little bit different and then focus on the concept again. Very good. So it's exactly what you're, yeah. what you're saying good. there. Yeah. But if, if you give the information and prioritize it, so this is the most important thing. This is the second most important thing. This is the third most important thing. And students will remember the most important things and that'll get them out of bad situations, okay? Um, so uh, I teach a mountain of details to 
when it comes to fundamentals, I tend to be very strict on fundamentals. Okay, um, I don't get me wrong. I, I I love exotic moves. I love innovation. I love to see people coming out with new stuff. Um, I do believe there's a tremendous amount of value in in being the first on the block with new technology. You saw that with my students' yep. leg locking. Um, my students came in using a, a a general methodology of leg locking which hadn't really been seen before. And it gave them a huge competitive advantage when they first emerged on the scene. Um, but you can't use innovation forever as a means of holding on to victory. Because yep. at some point, people are going to figure out what you're doing and they're going to counter it. It's just yep. the way life works. So the foundation yeah. has to be really So the foundation will always carry you through. Okay. Um, so interestingly, people tend to associate my coaching with uh, rather exotic elements of Jiu-Jitsu, like system building and things like this. But in fact, the majority of my training time with my students is fundamentals. Um, but fundamentals aren't sexy to most people. I so, got it. Um, yeah, but that's the question. Like, so how do you implement that? It's more like in the warm up, or it's doing the techniques no, you no, throw, like, no, 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 or it's with the details. That, that's, Where that's is a that? Great, 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 great question that Bernardo just said. So many people dismiss the fundamentals into the warm up. I got it. Okay, so on shrimping, uh, just do it before class. Uh, go up and down the mat five times. Okay, that's a disaster. Because now you've taken one of the most important skills in the entire sport, you've relegated to a warm up. So what do the students think? It's just something to do before I get into the real technique. No, the real technique is the shrimping. Okay, that's the stuff that's gonna make the difference when, the, when, when someone's on top of you, you gotta get out, you got 30 seconds to do it. That's what's gonna get you out. I teach body movements as a skill. Often, I, at the completion of class, I will have observed the class and I'll pull athletes in. And I'll say, I saw you struggle in this position. And we'll go through details. Bang, 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 bang. And it's very, very precise. It might be the difference between gripping a hand here versus here. And that might be the difference between holding off a strangle or getting strangled out. Right. Um, uh, and so I, I never relegate body movement and fundamentals to a warm-up. It's always taught as a very precise, very clinical, detail-oriented thing, often after class. So for example, we'll work in class, okay, here's the theme of the class. We go through uh, a set of skills or th themes for, for that given class, and then after class, I watch them inspire, and I say, I saw a failure here, here, and here. Let's address this now. Yeah. We go through the details. Yeah. That was a great question. And uh, yeah, guys, there's almost 100 people. Anybody has any questions? Like, uh, Randy? Yeah, um, Maddie Mahoney had a question that I can't see anymore. So if you're still there, Maddie, uh, ask your question again after we answer this next question from Christopher. Christopher wants to know what the number one fundamental drill would be, in your opinion. Um, can, can, is there any way Chris could be a little more specific? Is this a defensive drill or? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, pick I'll, one subject yeah, and yeah. Uh, we um, I, I always believe at, at fundamentals level, defense is more important than offense. Okay, the reason is simple. When you first enter the sport of Jiu Jitsu, you come in with no skills. You enter into a room full of people who have been there before you. So they have some skills and you have zero skills. And so inevitably, most, most of the time, you end up on the short end of the stick, you're getting attacked. So defense is the first skill you gotta learn. Um, I would say the first thing I would start students with is solo shrimping and bridging skills. Okay, you gotta start somewhere. So start by yourself, shrimping and bridging solo. Then experiment with body weight on top of you. Have people start in the mounted position and side positions and practice your bridging and shrimping underneath body weight. And then from there, uh, work in various positions side to side with side, side escapes, elbow escape from mount, left and right side, so you feel comfortable on both sides. Uh, having opponents behind you, sliding your back to the floor and turning into an elbow escape, and work like so. So everything would start with body movement, bridging and shrimping. There are other body movements that are important, but bridging and shrimp, shrimping are the two most important for your foundational escapes. Um, focus more and more and more upon the idea of an elbow escape. There are many forms of escape in Jiu-Jitsu, but the elbow escape statistically is the king by a landslide. No other escape is statistically so important as the elbow escape. Invest time in it. Start with your own body and then work to your training partner's body. And you got ready? Yeah, Maddie wants to know, have a little more details on kipping and the struggle to break, break free. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kipping is uh, a more advanced form of body movement. 
Um, you probably are familiar with the word kipping from um, forms of exercise, in particular chin-up. Okay, If I'm doing a pull-up on a bar and I feel I've completely run out of energy and I cannot pull my body up with my arms and, and back alone, what do you see everyone do? They start kicking with their legs. They're kipping. Okay? They cheat. They get up. Well, kipping is a way of moving my body weight through momentum built up by my legs. So, for example, if I wanted to move my hips to the left-hand side, I would take my leg and generate motion, and then a kip moves my hips to the left. So I can, if you just excuse me for a moment, I can move in a circle just by kipping. Okay? So if I want to create space between myself and opponent, I could do it just by planting a foot, or I could do it by kipping, and then plant it. And as a result, we can get up to our base. Okay? So kipping is a way of moving my body weight by generating momentum in my legs. Any other, Randy? That's it? So guys, the reason we decided to do these lives is because every time John comes here, we always spend time like talking about this. Exactly. <laughs> so today you're like, hey, let's put it live. Let's see how That's it's... Uh, yeah. So, uh, so guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. And we, if you guys want to see more about fundamentals, we're gonna leave the link for the fundamental instructions at bgfanatics.com. And uh, this is something that I'm gonna try to do more with John. So he comes here like uh, almost once a month. We take one entire weekend and we just shoot a ton of videos. So I think the live is gonna be very fun. Too. And remember, guys, the most important thing about discussion today: don't see the fundamentals as a phase you're going to pass through. See the fundamentals for what it is, the bedrock of your entire game in the sport. The stronger you are in the fundamentals, the harder you're going to be to beat for your opponent, and the easier it's going to be for you to learn additional skills as you get more advanced in the sport. It's not a phase you pass through. It's an active refinement over time. It's no exaggeration to say, and there's a mountain of proof to prove this is true, that you could have a game which was entirely fundamentals and had no advanced elements to it and still be a great great world champion S put the vast majority of your training focus upon the fundamentals i promise you that it will it will bring dividends that no amount of so-called advanced moves could ever hope to bring you well guys again i hope you guys enjoyed and make sure to check all the videos on bgfanatics.com